Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today, we'll be taking a look at my custom-built PFSense firewall. Before that though, if you're interested in this type of home lab server content, gaming PC builds, or component reviews, get subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon below this video for future notifications when I upload future videos. So this is my dedicated PFSense firewall. I originally built this system because I was curious about replacing my ISP's router as my main router in my network, and I had read a little bit about PFSense in Untangled. I obviously chose PFSense in the end. I'm not sure what tipped the scales in my mind originally, but after testing them both out, I remember really liking the PFSense functionality and web interface. Eventually, I also realized that there are many benefits to running something like PFSense in your home lab, your home in general, or even an SMB type business. The all-in-one routers that you get from your ISP generally are going to provide you with NAT and extremely basic firewalling, but something like a PFSense server when configured correctly is going to have many more configurable options and can be secured even better. Depending on what you're doing, the performance can also be much better. I personally use my PFSense firewall to not only provide firewalling, but routing, DHCP, and DNS to my network. My network is actually technically double natted. I'm running my whole network behind the PFSense firewall, and my PFSense firewall is behind my ISP router. You'll have to do research on whether or not you can actually replace your ISP router Sometimes, depending on the services and connection you have, you cannot. In my particular scenario, I can, but I did choose not to. PFSense generally doesn't require a ton of CPU power, RAM, or hard drive space for what the average user is doing. I'll add a link to one of the NetGate documents in the description that has a very generalized benchmark for the devices and hardware that they sell. This document is really mostly a starting point for assessing hardware needs for home users, home lab users, and SMBs. Typically, an older system that you might have retired is how you would start out normally. Retired PC systems are generally free and easily available. The only thing that's normally missing in an older system are additional network ports, but that's not a hard requirement, and you can always set up PFSense with just one network connection. If an older system has extra PCI Express slots though, you can always add in a NIC. When I set this server up, I knew I wanted to build something that was going to be power efficient, perform well, and had a relatively low overall cost. It also had to be rack mountable. For anyone following along with my home lab content, since I have a rack, you know that from my other videos, I moved basically all of my servers into this rack. If you're watching this because you want to build a PFSense server, you definitely do not need to rack mount this device. Whatever it happens to look like when you finish, it'll be running PFSense, and PFSense is PFSense. You'll almost certainly save money in the end by not rack mounting this type of server anyways. All of the components that I'm going to use are ATX compatible form factors. I'll link out to all the parts in the description below, as well as some standing regular ATX case options, so you definitely check that out. The case that I'm using in this build is an iStar USA D214 MATX model. This is a 2U rack mount case that's about 15 and a half inches deep. I reviewed this case a while back. You can check out that video review in the top right hand corner. This is a great budget option for a custom 2U server build. I really can't recommend it enough. In terms of what's powering PFSense, I opted to go with an ASRock J3455M embedded Intel Celeron motherboard combo. This CPU is a quad-core Atom from the Apollo Lake series. The CPU runs at 1.5 GHz base and is able to boost up to 2.3 GHz depending on the total CPU workload and the operating temperature. The motherboard is an embedded option from ASRock. It's certainly a budget board, but basically all I cared about for this build was that there was decent CPU performance, integrated video output for troubleshooting, and a few PCI Express slots. 
As you can see, I chose not to use the integrated NIC because it is a Realtek based chip. Realtek chips haven't always been supported very well or performed very well, but these days there's pretty much no issue with using them. I personally still prefer to use Intel NICs. So you can see here that I opted for a half height one gig Intel NIC. I actually picked this up for about 20 bucks off of eBay. In terms of the memory selection for this type of server, it's not super important. Ideally, you'd wanna choose registered ECC memory, but any CPU and motherboard that do support registered ECC memory are going to lead you down a much more expensive build path, typically with a higher power draw. This means higher costs over time as you run the server because this is a server that you would run 24 seven. I opted to run this with a single four gig 1333 MHz DDR3 DIMM. I did stress test it before throwing it into the build, so I know that it's all good. The SSD that I'm using is very small. I bought this one used off of eBay for the build. I will mention though, that if you purchase any components used, or even really any new components, you should stress test them before you put them into a server that's basically going to be responsible for your entire internet connection. In terms of SSDs or hard drives, you should be running them through tests to make sure that there are no bad sectors and the drive's completely working. In terms of memory, you should also definitely run each DIMM through Memtest86 to make sure that there are no issues. It's also important to note, once you fully set up your PFSense server, and any time you make large changes after, I would definitely recommend creating a backup of your configuration. It's unlikely, but in the event that anything does happen to your PFSense setup, you'll want to be able to restore your configuration quickly. Moving on into system utilization, I've never really seen this quad core atom hit peak utilization. I rarely exceed 400 to 450 megabytes of usage. Now I will say I am just doing basic services on the PFSense firewall right now. Currently I'm not running Snort, Squid, or VPN at the moment. If you choose to do network traffic scanning, content caching, or you want to remote into your network, this will directly result in increased system usage. I would still advise that any home users, home lab users, or even certain small businesses try to reuse a retired PC. This will help reduce e-waste and it's also going to help save you money at the start. If the system that you're using is not performing the way you want it to, you always have the option for an inexpensive upgrade or you could just build a completely new system. The benefit to using a retired system is that it's obviously going to be pretty much free to start but the flip side is higher power consumption. Newer systems are typically going to be more power efficient. PFSense has a healthy community and lots of support from NetGate. PFSense also supports various add-on packages from its package manager. There's quite a few packages these days that will help with various statistics collection as well as feature add-ons. The most popular add-ons are probably Snort, PFBlocker and G, and Squid for proxy caching to speed up web page loads. If any of you are interested in going through a basic PFSense setup video and possibly going through and configuring some of the packages or learning when you would use them, let me know in the comments section down below. That might actually be interesting to go over since I do see a few more packages in here since when I looked last. So this is my custom PFSense server. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about it, or if you're looking into building your own PFSense type server, or what you're running for your network firewall in general, at your house, your home lab, or even an SMB. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know. I create home lab tech and gaming PC videos every week, so if this kind of stuff interests you, get subscribed to the channel and click that bell icon for video notifications. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or on the website, samstechstuff.com. <laughs>